Hi guys, it's Matt and I've been having some issues with my retail so it wasn't catching and if it was catching it would catch about four or five times out of ten so I got myself a metal catch plate and spring because I think the problem is with the catch system. It's got a nine kilo worker kit in there and it does make it the Desert Eagle of Nerf, basically. It's incredibly powerful um, for what it is, basically. For a nine kilo, it's it's insane um i do have another retaliator that has a full kit that's going to go into it but i thought well i need a new catch plate anyway so my other kit comes with a catch plate so why not see if this fixes or addresses the issue in any way at all or i just everything explodes and uh, it all goes horribly wrong so let's see where I made a mess right that came out fine uh, and then I just spilled all the screws all over my workbench kitchen table thing in in oh, damn it thank you um so yeah um the original retail kit does come with a pair of crash pads um crash pads that go in front of here and they are designed to absorb any shock from the the spring but what i found was those aforementioned pads would push it back so far the it wouldn't actually engage and it was just locking up every time i tried to prime it so if we take out the 9k mainspring and you can see that that is a bit weedy now if i have a look at the plunger rod itself there's no obvious sign of, of damage. The, the plunge is a little bit loose, I will say that, but I will take out the trigger so I don't lose it. Or the spring doesn't go pinging off into the internet. Um, and what I'll do first is because this feels really loose, I mean, that's horrific. I'm going to gently try and extract the plunger tube. There we go. Oh, that's got a healthy amount of grease on it. So, so much dead space, but I did put the dead space reducer in there. So hopefully that will help, but with a gentle sort of tilting and rocking motion, if you're careful enough and gentle enough, as I screw this up on camera, you can, uh, or not, pop out the plunger rod. Uh, no, there's, there's just a ton of silicon grease behind it, so screw that. Um, it's it's well lubricated. It just doesn't. There's this. It doesn't feel like there's any airflow going through, or there's very minimal airflow going through. So what I'm going to do is I am going to pause for a moment, grab my Teflon tape out of my 
box of magic stuff and see if I can't get this plunger head out without breaking anything and then put a couple of rolls of uh, Teflon tape underneath I mean I'm nearly there you just have to be really careful not to split the o-ring or damage the o-ring in any way. I've got some spare o-rings, but I don't know if I've got any that will fit a retaliator. Which is ironic, as soon as they're probably one of the most... Ah, oh, there we go. See? Problem. Just a little one. So... Then we grab some e tape or some um, Teflon. Okay, so I found my tape. It was in my Springer mod box. So I reckon about two to two and a half wraps of this should suffice. That's if I can get the thing straight. So whatever doesn't actually go into the groove, as it were, I'll just trim off with a scalpel. It's quite easy. Okay, that's one. And that's probably two and a bit and now i can't find my scalpel joy okay yank it why is it that teflon tape is supposedly got teflon on it yeah well due to its name um yeah, it seems to stick to bloody everything except what you're trying to apply it to. So, two and a half wraps. Let's just hope this works because I'm damned if I'm doing it again. I'm just using a little bit. All right, not a little bit, quite a lot of silicon grease. But it will relude the entire of the plunger tube, so that's not a bad thing. I'm contemplating putting those crash pads back in and seeing if I get any better results with the... Uh... Oh, let's try not to make the O-ring pop any of that. And in we go. Oh, that is instantly a much, much better seal. I mean, that's audibly a better seal. So, yeah, that's a start, I suppose. Oh, no, 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 no. I can see the air rings kinked. So, try and... Gently prise it out and then pop you back in. That's better. Now the air ring's straight. And that is a good seal. That is, despite Hasbro and their uh, tapered plunger tubes, that's not a bad seal. I am going to go against installing the crash pads again. One, because I can't be bothered to find my retail kit, or my work kit. I know it's in my office somewhere, it's just I can't be bothered to find it. Um, so yeah, in we go. So plunger is in place, it seems. And there we have our plastic one which 
I never really thought about it, but I never really looked that hard. It feels so weak and flimsy and the catch springs wobbly and it's loose, whereas this has got a real stiff catch spring. And uh, if I don't grease up the edges of the, uh, the metal, that should serve as an excellent catch. So if we slide the catch spring over and then, yep, same issue as the, as every retail, the catch spring does not like staying, so give it a nudge, that to me looks Fine. I don't know if anybody else can see any issues, but I certainly can't. So dropping the trigger, and that should interface nicely with the catch, which I will say. is incredibly tight i'm not kidding that that is one hefty little spring so let's just make sure it doesn't go pinging across my living room well my kitchen so uh oh who knows it could end up in my kitchen and my living room rather than my kitchen let's put a tiny little dab of silicon grease on there just so the trigger sear and the catch plate are happy whoop nearly lost a finger to silicon grease okay so as you can tell it's already been modded there's 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 hardly anything left in there it's that's worth worrying about because it will deprime. I'm gonna to have to change the bolt sled on my new one. Um, because I've got a Jace 3D um, pump kit for it, and I've already ordered the new parts, so it's a bit late now. Um, but that should do the job. Now, all looks right. It's just lining up the two pieces of the shell so that I'm not knocking out the trigger because that would be stupid. And getting the post. In to the bolt sled. So that should, in effect, close up. But, like I said, in effect. There we go. Okay. And that's why we don't pre compress the spring first. Just let it do its job, wind it in, and there we go. Let's just make sure these, the important screws, i.e. the catch screws, and the slide, are all in position. I'm actually amazed at myself that I haven't lost the, uh, the attachment tooth yet. Because that tends to be one of the first things that just goes pinging out at me. Okie dokie. No, oh, I don't seem to have a screw in that port. I'm sure I've got a spare or two. 
How's that? Still going? There we are. Now I do remember the super super long one dropping in the front. Just underneath the barrel. And it is one of those super long ones. And there we go, that's locked in nice and tight. These two I didn't have to take out, so they should just be straight back in. screws to the tack rail and go hopefully this should alleviate my previous woes of having problems with it catching because sometimes you really have to slam the slide back in order to make it catch because it is an unholy beast and I don't really think it's designed to take 9k as a without extra reinforcement and It's okay, yeah. Okay. Is that catching on anything? No, that is flush. That's okay. Good, good. Let's just check. That's in. That's in. That's in. I'm missing two screws. Somebody always has to say I have a screw loose. And yep. They'd be right. Aha! Uh -huh. One thing I completely forgot about. The totally pointless single dart holder. So, yep. Those are going to come out just so I can tease that little thing out again. Well, tease it back in. I have no idea why Nerf went, hey, or Hasbro went, hey, let's just, uh, yeah, let's just put enough room for a single dart in there that you aren't going to be able to get access to ever. Not unless you've got some pliers. Looks like I'm going to undo a couple more screws to get this bottom end open. Because it doesn't want to be opened. So if you're sticking around here, which is strange. Try a little flat head. So 
not wanting to open all the way up, but I'm damned if I'm taking all those screws out just to get. Ugh. Okay. You win, retaliator. Retaliator? Retaliator. You win. I shall undo more screws until I get you to fit. I don't know why it's binding at the back. There's no screws in there. There is nothing, there is absolutely nothing binding the back up. All the screw ports are empty. Don't tell me I'm going to undo the whole thing again just to get that silly little thing, that dart holder in there. Let's try a couple more, just loosen them a little bit. Come on, why is it binding at the back? There's nothing at the back to hold it closed. And there's no, there's no screw even in that port. What, what the ha? Ha? How? Why? No. Same. No binding, no binding, no binding. Then it sticks around here where there are one, two, three, four screw ports. Have I been an idiot and not undone that one as much? Might need a bit. More, yeah, a bit more worked. Okay, I am an idiot. Okay, now I can get back down to the actual job of screwing the thing together. Yay, joy! This is running a stock bolt sled, so um. Yeah, we'll see how that works out. But I do have a new bolt sled and a new kit with a new catch plate and expanded plunger tube. Um, and this is all because I bought a Jace 3D uh, pump kit for a retire. And it was a good price, so I jumped on it and went, yeah, I'll have that. Little did I know how much stress a retaliator could cause. Um, that was a sh short. No, you're not. You're in medium. As I assume you're wanting the grip is also the other part of the grip. Sorry if you're not catching all of this on camera because it's absolutely scintillating. This whole screwing and screwing lock. Might as well drop um, screw port. Yeah, it's still in there. That's good. It's tight enough. Right, stop the test from peace. Oh, I love the work and never remember which way these things go on. Okay. Something about 20, 30 seconds, you'll work out whether this thing actually helped. I do like 
a lot of workers stuff they do some really good stuff but unfortunately right now a lot of it is out of my price bracket and the trigger seems comfortable something just fell out but it's held Oh, that sounds nicer. Okay. That sounds like it actually did something. It is a bit of a pain to pull back on that 9K, but... Oh, I found a dart head. Joy. Um, yeah, the trigger pull is slightly stiffer. But that's down to the heavier catch spring, I assume. Well, yeah, it is. So, old catch. Tape. And let's see if we get any improvement out of this. Because this was hitting like a freight train before. That's when it would catch. Um, let's grab some good old prototypes. See, it's locking back no problem now. Before, I'd have to sort of slam it back three or four times before it even catch. That's locked. And you can't see this, but... Wow. Yeah. That that does that does make a difference. Um I'm not sold on the little crash pads, but that's got some poke to it now. And It'll quite happily stay open. I can breach load if I need to. See, normally if I did that, if I just slap the uh, the slide forward, it would sometimes discharge itself, and that would be bad. But I'll just shoot my fridge as soon as it's there, like literally four feet in front of me. Boom. Yeah. All in all, I would say that is a resounding success. It does make a massive difference if you change from a plastic catch. Like, I don't know if this is a Cetal, Dalrin, uh, you know, but I mean, the spring's reasonable. It's not weak. Um, it is, you know, a genuine worker product. I think it's just the, the surfaces on there were just not good enough. And they, they wouldn't, it wouldn't catch reliably. But now... Every single time catches, breach load, closes happily, heavy trigger pull. But that's a good 30 feet flat using prototypes. So yeah. There we go. One catch plate replacement and spring replacement. It already has the 9K. So that shouldn't be an issue ever. Um, and I do have another 9K kit coming. As well as... Um, well, just to complement the pump kit. I've got another 9k kit coming, new bolt sled. Um, but yeah, I will next planted plunger tube and plunger rod. Um, 
it's it's one of those things, you know, you gotta wait for things to come from China. And it can take two weeks, it can take a month, you know, it depends on shipping and whether there's a boat leaving from Shenzhen or whatever. But no. That now works. I am a lot happier. Primes holds like totally fine. Slap it closed. Boom. Flat shot without any drop over 25 feet. Maybe 30? Yeah, about 30 feet. So all in all, that is, well, just white trash. I'll keep the spring, but um, I might keep the catch just in case I need to do something with a catch like that. I could file the end down to make it a bit more sh sort of flat rather than ramped so that it won't keep sliding against itself but the metal catch plate does wonders and I am most pleased with it so if you've got a retaliator and you intend on increasing the uh, the spring load in it I would highly recommend grabbing yourself a metal catch plate as well because that now performs very very well um i think the extra e-tape under the o-ring you have to be careful not to make to, to kink the o-ring or twist it in any way make sure it's smooth all the way around so Pop your ring on and then just run a screwdriver around gently on the underside just to smooth so it, so it uh, gets rid of any twists in the um, in the air ring and make sure it's lubricated properly. A couple of wraps of Teflon tape and yeah, it's great. Still don't like this big barrel thing and this stock is pointless so it will probably just stay in pistol form and be a sidearm um, but yeah I'm pleased with it I haven't I haven't put a mag through it yet I don't even know if I have one in the kitchen probably not they're probably all in my magazine bag but still it works and I'm happy with that, but that's what that was three pounds ish, three fifty. So we're talking four dollars, five dollars. Nice metal catch plate, does the job, good spring on it, holds, and improving the air seal was definitely a, a bonus. I reckon that's hitting probably around. 130, 140 maybe. I don't know. We'll see. Um, otherwise, I've been Matt. And, uh, yeah. If you like the channel, hit like, hit subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. They're all at the bottom of your screen down here somewhere. I don't know. But if you enjoyed it and you learnt something and you want to, you, you have problems with your retaliator and you don't have a metal catch, you've got one of these crummy plastic ones, um, then yeah, that might solve your problem. And those crash pads don't need to be in there. Joy. So that was less of me fettling around trying to find the uh, the box. So take away from that what you will. I hope to see you soon. I hope you like it. I hope you subscribe. I hope you at least try and get other people to subscribe because I'm having a bit of a personal crisis. So 
thank you for watching and hopefully you'll see me soon take care guys bye now